This is Stephen Lukowski from Christian Music Network, and we're here with 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 John Helton. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. How are you, buddy? Great, 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 great. So you have a nickname, the Blind Fury. So how yes. did that come about? Well, back in 2008, I was a newlywed, three and a half months, and I was getting ready to go to work, turned around from the sink, got extremely dizzy, my left arm went numb, dropped by my side, <laughs> and it kind of freaked me out a little bit. And so, uh, long story short, and it's because uh, it's quite the story, actually, but long story short, I ended up in the hospital that night, and um, they kept me for observations because they said I've either had a stroke it was a pre-stroke or a stroke was coming. So they kept me overnight. And then the next morning at 6 a.m., they took me for an MRI. And I remember going down to the MRI. I don't remember coming back up. Right, yeah. <laughs> so from that point on for the next few days, I was completely out of my head. And uh, long story short, I had three major brain diseases all at one time. I had no immune system, zero, zilch, nada. Wow. And I had nothing to fight them. And what I ended up having was cerebral histoplasmosis, which they had never seen before. Mm -hmm. it, that's usually in the eyes or maybe in the spine. Most of the time, it's not that big of a deal, but mine got to the brain and it caused me to have meningitis and encephalitis all at the same time. Now, if you don't know what those are, or for anybody who sees this, meningitis is the lining of your brain squeezing it. And, you know, who knows how many people have passed away from that. But encephalitis is your brain swelling. Wow. So now my brain's <clears throat> doing this and the lining's doing this. That's not a good combination. No. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but what no. they said was that I could come out of the hospital with motor skills loss. And I'm still playing drums to this day. They said I could come out with the mentality of a 12-year-old. Family got excited, said that was great. So no, that's, that's a joke. They didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think they said that, <laughs> but, but I did lose a lot of vision. So uh, when I came out of the hospital, I was almost completely blind. Wow. 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 So, 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 so tell, tell us about yourself. Hmm. Wow. Uh, where do I start? Um, yeah, I guess after, the after the yeah. vision, <laughs> I guess I could start there, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There's always a good place to start. Yeah, why not? Let's go with the blindness. <laughs> <laughs> um, after that happened, about a year later, I started another band and played my first show. And it's kind of a neat testimony. I was going to this little place in Indiana to play. And I was a little frustrated because the band that I felt stabbed me in the back was playing this huge festival. And I was like, man this is just not cool. But then I immediately repented. I was like, God, you know what? If you wanted me at that festival, that's where I would be. So I'm going to go up here and whoever it is you want me to touch or reach in whatever way, let's roll. Mm -hmm. we, we get to this park, little bitty park, probably 20, 30 people. I didn't care. My first show ever playing blind. And when the show was over, the guy who did it had several bands lined up. I did not have to take my own drum kit. So I was done. And he walked up to me during the switchover and said, would you like to give a testimony? I was like, or your testimony? I was like, yeah, <laughs> but I didn't know what to say. Okay. And he, he gave me a few minutes. And then I had a couple of people after the show come up to me. And one specific lady said, my dad sent me down here to tell you thank you, because what you said, he really needed to hear it. I went, whoa. And then I had somebody else do something similar and I was blown away. And I was married to Sherry. I'll tell you about that in just a second. As I move mm -hmm. on through this story, um, I told her the next night I was still blown away. And when I told her that it kind of hit me, I thought, I wonder if God's calling me to the speaking ministry. And within seconds, she looks at me and says, do you think God's calling you to the speaking ministry? I went, <laughs> <laughs> I do now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do now. So it started back then. I released a website and my website was supposed to release in 2017 because I didn't really do anything as far as promoting websites or anything like that. At that time, I started to get more serious with it because I was doing some speaking and I was about to release my website in just a few days before I, that was supposed to happen, happen. She actually passed away. Wow. So um, that's why I said, Sherry, um, not 
my wife because I do have a wife. Um, she's my late wife. So mm -hmm. anyway, I ended up writing a book about losing the vision and losing a, a, a spouse. And it's called Stop Your Whining, Legally Blind with 2020 Vision. And the whole point of that is when you look at life through spiritual eyes, excuse me, versus uh, physical eyes, it looks a lot different. And, you know, Certainly. losing the vision, it's not easy. Here's what I say sometimes from the stage. Do I need to shut up so you can ask another question? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, from the stage, I will say something like, you know, being blind is horrible if you make it that way. But being blind is a blast if you make it that way. It's really a choice because I have no option right now of what my vision is. So I can either whine, moan, complain. Excuse me, there's my, my uh, phone talking to me. Um, I can sit around and complain about it and I'm still gonna have this vision or I can do something and try to glorify God through it. And that's what my choice is. So the book was released back in June of 2020. And then a couple of months after that, I started a, uh, that's a whole nother story. Gosh, I'm going to try to keep this brief so people don't get bored. Um, in the meantime, when she passed away, I thought, you know, I might mention it from the stage on occasion and maybe say something like, you know, cherish your spouse because you never know, give a little 30 second glimpse. And then I met Tanya. Cool. And when I met Tanya and I heard her horror stories of marriage, I've been through some horror stories. I thought somebody's got to do something. And I knew There's God Tanya. was Tanya. Right. Yes. But I knew at that point, somebody had to do something. And I knew that God was calling me to uh, start a marriage and relationship ministry. And she actually helped me name it. And it's called Marital Monkey. So it's because I'm serious, but man, I love to laugh and have a lot of fun and I love monkeys. So if you, if you can see my desk, I have three stuffed monkeys. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, so Marital Monkey, I have a show on Monday nights called Marital Monkey Mondays. We discuss marriage through scripture and practical topics. We interact. I give away gift certificates to restaurants and just have a ball with it. Um, during building marital monkey which started in april 2019 that's when it was named uh she and i ended up going to school and got our certifications so we're both certified relationship coaches bereavement coaches and professional coaches and i actually start back this coming weekend to become a certified master relationship coach and then i'm going to go through an extended advanced course to be a master coach which gives me group coaching and laser coaching certificates so that's all about marital monkey in the same month of last year in August, I started the Psalm 150 talk show, and that's where I bring in pretty popular Christian music artists and let everybody join in and talk to them. And next year, next year, we're in 2021, aren't we? Yes, um, we are. <laughs> thanks, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're starting out doing musicians, but then it's going to start expanding to like comedians and marriage ministry people. I just booked a guy who ran from Los Angeles to New York, and he's completely blind. Wow. So he, yeah, so I'm bringing him on the show as well. And it's just, that's what the Psalm 150 show is. And I'm in the middle of writing four books. Other than that, I'm pretty bored. Okay. You asked. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I did. I did. I did. I did. So when, uh, when you, you were a drummer, uh, what bands did you play for? Well, I was in a band in the early 90s called um, Omega Highway. And that was long before the internet. And we were pretty successful locally and uh, even you know within an hour or two radius we would have a, a good crowd show up most of the time and then uh even got some local radio airplay um then i joined another band in 2006 when i moved back from nashville slash bowling green and it was called wisdom's call and we signed with a, a small company out of texas called soul joy records so it was a pretty successful band as well and it, it was more of my style. It was heavier, and I got to use that double bass quite a bit. That's me. Oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, 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 do you have any songs that you worked on that 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 really help you in, in your faith? As far as what I played, or just in general? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the songs that you played that you know that 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 really 
you know, convicted you and with well, to say convicted or even anything like that, probably not because I was so focused on the drums. Okay. But there was a song Omega Highway did, and I'm very upbeat. I don't really like slow anything, <laughs> mm -hmm. but there was a slower song we did called That Cross. It might be on my website. I have several of the songs up, but there's a song called That Cross that's pretty powerful. There was another one that was slow called Prince of Peace, My God Lives. So they're all lyrically fantastic. Um, I didn't write the lyrics. That's why they're fantastic. But they uh, they they minister to a lot of people. Like My God Lives was the one that the local radio station picked up. And then uh, Prince of Peace is another slow one that we we had people requesting. We would go to Nashville mm. and play, and people would walk up to us and say, are you guys going to play Prince of Peace? And we're like, we're not even from Tennessee. How did you know about us? So that's kind Whoa. of the spread of that band, you know, that again, that was before the uh, internet. Right. So it, it was pretty wild to go two hours away in Nashville and then somebody walk up and ask us to play a song they've heard off of our recording. So um, now when it comes to Wisdom's Call, which was much heavier, at, the lyrics again were super solid, but I was so busy thinking about the drums and worrying about that. I didn't really <laughs> let the words minister to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I did write um, lyrics to one of the songs on the record. It's called Larger Than Life. And it's basically basically a Christian taunting Satan and saying um, the one I serve is larger than life. And, you know, it's too long to get into. But, yeah, I, I wrote the lyrics to that song, actually. So we'll pick that one, Stephen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah. Uh, 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 so on your on your on your, on your Christian music radio show, uh, what are the memorable moments there so far? Well, so far, man, it's it's something that has uh, blessed me more than I ever thought it would. Um, I've have made contacts throughout the years. Um, like this coming week, this today's January sixth, twenty twenty one. So this coming Sunday night, which is the tenth. Troy Thompson from Brides coming on. I've known Troy since probably 92. Um, I live in Kentucky. He lives in Kentucky. And one of the good guys of Christian Rock, not that they're all bad. I'm just saying he's right. one that stands out. So making all of these contacts, I wanted to bring those guys in to a podcast that I was doing last year, but I was building Marital Monkey. And while I'm building that, the podcast got to be so overwhelmingly time consuming. I was like, now that's my hobby. I need to get back to my calling. So I dropped the podcast after talking to Jimmy Brown from Deliverance for three hours on the phone. But then it hit me this year with all the Zoom stuff. I wanted to do it again, but I didn't know how. And I thought, you know what I could do? I could connect the artists with the fans and let right. them interact. And that to me has, that's what's memorable almost with every show. And, you know, we had Les Carlson from Blood Good on Sunday. A guy from Australia shows up. And when Les starts talking to him, he's like, I can't believe I'm talking to you. I was <laughs> cool. like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what's the, the cool thing about it is that, you know, these guys have had letters and people to sign autographs for all of that stuff. Sure. But when they get into this format, it blows me away. The one I remember them, well, two of them, I, well, <laughs> three, <laughs> you have John Elefante, who used to sing for Kansas and Mastodon. Um, John Lowry, the keyboardist for Petra, Jimmy Brown from Deliverance. Um, these guys, especially John Lowry, he said, I can only do an hour. I'm recording somebody that day. I'm taking my lunch break. I'm going to jump on there with you guys, but I've got to be gone in 60 minutes. Well, two hours later, he finally had to go because they knocked on his door. Right. And wow. he was having a ball. Cool. And so, you know, Michael Bloodgood said, man, that was a blast. And so it really is neat to watch the artists enjoy it just as much as the people who are getting to engage with them and that blesses me man it's just it's just awesome yeah 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 sounds really awesome awesome so uh, uh, uh how can we contact you well my official website is theblindfury.com which is my nickname that's t-h-e blind fury um some people leave the the off <laughs> um okay. so www.theblindfury.com and you can see a lot of stuff on there. Um, I show myself bowling. I have a video up of me bowling blind. Oh. Um, 
I have a couple of drum solos on there, some music tracks I've recorded. Uh, it talks about my professional coaching and relationship coaching because I have an enormous passion for relationships. Uh, just people don't understand what marriage is. They don't understand even what a relationship is anymore. And uh, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to deal with it and see it. And so anyway, you get me on that and I'll get quite passionate, but um, that's on there. My book's on there. Um, I'm writing a men's devotional right now as well, getting ready to start putting together a men's uh, program to help strengthen their um, marriage understanding and trying to teach them how to treat their wives. You know, the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Well, why do they treat them like they're not good and God didn't give them favor when they found their wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and that just... I, that's where my passion is mm. in this season of my life. And I love speaking. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I just flew to North Carolina in September in the middle of the pandemic to go speak at a church out there. Cause I love it. Love it. Love it. I do it every weekend if I could. So anyway, that's how you can find me the blind fury.com. Okay, cool. Awesome. 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 Uh, uh, so uh, what's I had for you. So you what what's, now? Yeah, what's ahead for you for uh, 2021 and 2022? Or... Oh, what's ahead? Yeah, I had. Okay, got you, got you, got you. You're from Pennsylvania, is that right? Right, exactly, yeah. Yeah, that Northeastern slang got me there, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, darn that like, slang. Uh, you might want to <laughs> say that again. Can you spell that or email it to me? Because I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, again, I'm, I'm currently getting ready to head back to school and get more certifications to help marriages. And I, I'm, I'm putting a program together, as mentioned, called Godly Strong, and it's dedicated toward men. And I'm going to be putting these eight and 12 week packages together to have men join other men and let's help them build their relationship with their wife. Um, so that's one thing I'm doing. Um, the goal is to also put a marriage conference together. Have you ever heard of Bob Smiley, the comedian? Yes, definitely. Okay, Bob, I talked to him a couple of months ago. He's agreed to go with me anywhere on the cool. marriage conferences. So it's going to be, the goal is to be um, almost like a band where the Marital Monkey Marriage Conference comes to your town. And I've talked to Bob Smiley. He's all in. And I didn't even realize when I talked to Bob that he does marriage ministry in his set when he's the headliner. I right, was like, yeah. are you kidding me? Cool. He said, oh, yeah, man, I definitely do that. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Um, I saw John Schlitt in Missouri back in October. And I talked to him a little bit and told him I, I wouldn't mind getting him involved. And he just said, John, I'm there. Whatever I can do, you let me know. And he said, that even means if you need me to speak, I'll do it. So, and John Schlitz coming up uh, January 17th as well on my show, the Psalm 150 talk show. Um, super nice dude. And so that's kind of the goal for marriage conferences to take them to different cities and have Bob Smiley do com comedy and maybe John do some music and then I'll do some teaching and we'll have games, we'll give away prizes and just have a blast um, I've also got some things in the works regarding the speaking ministry that I don't really want to say at this point, but there are some things in the works there as well. And I have four books that I'm writing. So the men's devotional, the men's marriage devotional, I'd like to get done by the end of March. I have one I am writing called God sent me a personal text message, the story of the blind leading the blonde. And that's the story about my and my wife's dating time and how God moved when the enemy tried to destroy it um because he did and that's that's the whole story you know god stepped in and said oh no no these are my kids and you gotta get your hands off and so god showed up in some seriously supernatural ways cool. and so that that book's in the in the works too so the other two are going to have to wait until those two are finished <laughs> so okay. that's my plan for 2021 what do you think <laughs> okay awesome, awesome awesome other than that man i'm really bored yeah yeah okay well Thank you for coming on, John. It was my pleasure. Oh, mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any uh, last words? Well, I just like to encourage people 
And, you know, you heard some of the stuff that I do. And what I love to say to people is this, if I can do all of this blind now, like the marital monkey website, I built that site. Like I built it from scratch. Okay. My wife picked out the colors and helped me get the colors right. Cool. But think about a legally blind guy building a website and it doesn't make any sense, but God doesn't make any sense. He just has this knack to get people to do things that they don't think they can do. So when I get up there and I talk, my encouragement to people is this, to God be the glory, by the way, I'm not taking credit for any of this stuff, but if I can do all that I do being blind, <laughs> what's your excuse? Amen. Seriously, what's your excuse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not going to listen. I, I yeah. can't stand excuses. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I was born with Trichicon's syndrome, you know, which, you know, which was, it's it's borderline between retarded, dumb, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but God uses, uses me, you know, yes. so there's, there's no excuse why That's God right. can't use you, you know, yes, it's pretty awesome. Yes. I love what you're doing, by the way. I mean, when you look at it, when he told Moses to go, what did he tell Moses to do? Go tell Pharaoh. Well, Moses had a stuttering problem right. and he's go tell Pharaoh. Moses is like, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. Well, how, the, what are they going to do? What if they reject me? And he made all these excuses, but God exactly. had already made the provisions. Yes. Yes. So, yes. When, so when God put you in a position to do something, drop the excuses and just trust him. Exactly. That's exactly. it. That's exactly. it. We make this way too difficult. He says, go to Pharaoh. Okay, then go. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he, yeah. he says, also, Stephen, do a show. Then do the show. Exactly. Exactly. Well, in the Bible, you know, God always says, do not fear. I'm with you. Don't Joshua fear. I'm, one I'm with you through the whole entire Bible. Yes, sir. You know, that, you know and, and, and when we go out there, and, and proclaim Jesus or do whatever we can for God, you know, we should just do it without yeah. excuses. Yeah, because he says it just like you said it. He says, have I not, he didn't say ask you, have I not commanded you? Exactly. Do not be afraid because I'm with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And Amen. we go, I don't want to go. Well, get over it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're going. Yeah, but you're yeah. like you're not, you know. Yeah. You and I are about to have church, Stephen. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yes, yes. I know the Holy Spirit is leading me, but that's okay. Praise God. But you keep doing it, Muddy. I'll sit and listen, which is hard <laughs> for me. You keep rolling. I'll sit back and enjoy the, the message. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I yeah, love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want this to be a two hour show, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not good at stopping mine short either. I promise you. <laughs> well, Les Carlson uh, went two hours and 20 minutes, just saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, uh, we can end right here and say, uh, 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 thank you for coming on. And, oh, man. and, and we'll resume later on. And uh, next week I have uh, uh, Wendy Cruz here. That's January 13th at 8 p.m. So, so uh, goodbye. That's awesome. Buddy, thank you so much. Yep. Okay. Bye. You have a great night. You too. All right. See you, buddy. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>